Welcome to this iOS development tutorial in which we're going to take a look at how you can play video within iOS. Uh, uh, as part of this tutorial we're going to be taking a look at the media player framework and we're going to play a video uh, that is actually located within our app bundle itself. So let's get started. Uh, first steps of course is to go to file new project and create a new iOS application. You'll notice of course I'm under iOS, I've got application selected and I'm going to select the single view application template. I will hit next and let's just call this uh, project v player and you'll notice that of course um, I've got a couple things already filled in I've got uh, the company identifier uh, but the key thing that I want to point here uh, point out here is that I've got use automatic reference counting checked so make sure you've got that checked we'll hit next and it's gonna ask us where I'd like to create this project I'm just gonna create it on the desktop hit create and Xcode will have to do a little bit of indexing um, and things like that and scanning to make sure it's uh, this project is ready for us to use so we'll do this in just one a second here we should be ready to go looks like it's just about done and here we are alright so first step that we want um, to take to create this project of course is we need to select uh, click on the name of our project here within the project navigator window and that gives us a couple different options here in the central window so the option we're looking for is called build phases so let's click on that and you'll notice of course there's a couple different accordions here one of them is called link binary with libraries so let's expand that and you'll notice that there's a couple different frameworks that are included by default when you pick this template that's great we need one more so we're going to click on the plus button and we're going to look for a framework called a media player framework and it shows pulls up two. we want the second one it's called the media player framework we're going to hit add um, so now we've added the framework to our project, but we also need to um, add it to our view controller file. Uh, this view controller is where we're going to be doing most of our work. So I'm going to jump into the view controller.h and I am going to import the header file for it. So we need the second option. It's just called media player. Media player.h. There we are. We've got that set up. Let's do a command s to save. <laughs> Next, we're going to jump into our view controllers nib file. And what we're going to do here is we're going to create an application where we've got a button on screen. And when the user taps it, it loads the uh, sort of the media player um, uh, interface and plays the video back. So let's, let's do just that. So we're going to drag a round rect button onto our screen. And I'm going to let that go. And I'll double click into it and give it a uh, friendly message like play video. With that done, what we're going to do is we're going to click on the assistant editor. So that's this button up at the top right corner that looks like a tuxedo. And we're going to click on that. And I'm going to right then jump back into sort of the uh, interface builder portion. I'm going to select the button, right click it, and drag a connection over here to uh, the view controller.h or the assistant editor window. Now it's going to ask me uh, whether I want to create an outlet. No, I actually want to create an action. Um, because this will be a method that we want to fire. So I'm just going to call this method, you can call it whatever you like, I'm just going to call it play video. Uh, the event of course is correct, it's set to touch up inside and we're going to hit connect and we should be all set there. So of course doing it this way means we get this particular declaration in the header file and we also get um, the sort of the setup for including our code in the implementation file. I'm going to click on the standard editor again and that will allow me to sort of come back to my uh, nib interface. I'm just going to hit Command S to make sure I save everything, and now I can jump back into my View Controller's header file. And so you'll see here again we've got the IB action, we've got the little circle that indicates this is actually hooked up to uh, some particular item in our um, uh, nib file. In fact, you can click on that and it shows you what it's connected to. Uh, so we are good to go there. So let's make some more space here. Uh, Command S to save again. Right, so one of the things that we're going to be doing when we work with, uh, um, you know, the media player framework is we're going to be instantiating an object called the MP Movie Player Controller. Right, and in the past, what we've actually been able to do, or what I've been able to do, is jump straight into my implementation file, instantiate it within a method like this that I've created, and everything was dandy. However, I've discovered recently. 
uh, from sort of doing some research on the internet, because there's plenty of other people that have had this problem, is ever since um, ARC, or automatic reference counting, has been introduced, um, if you check that option, and you'll remember that when we first created this project, we did check that option. If you do not create a property of the MP Movie Player controller, and you try to use it within your implementation file, when you try to play the video, all you get is a blank or a black screen. Um, and so it's kind of been a little bit frustrating because you know I've got code that has worked in the past without having to create a property, but it turns out that if you use ARC, you do need to create it. And so let's go ahead and do just that, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a property like we normally do. We're gonna set it non-atomic strong And then we're going to create an object called an MP Movie Player Controller. We'll just call it something as simple as Movie Player. And of course, if we use the at property, we want to get the complete setter and getter. So let's do an at synthesize to make sure we've got that. And we call it Movie Player, I believe. Yeah. Let's do command S to save. Right. Okay. Our next step, of course, is going to be to actually add the video to our bundle. So the way we do that is we're going to select this project folder and I'm just going to right click it and say add files to vplayer. And I've got a file on my desktop that I'm going to just go ahead and import in. And I want to make sure I've got this option checked that says copy items into destination groups folder. And that'll ensure that a copy is made when it's added to my bundle instead of just a reference. So this is great. We've got the file in there. Now, I also wanted to point out to you that when you're working with video in iOS, you do have to follow some particular standards in terms of the file format for the video, what compression is used, and things like that. And if you want to learn a little bit more, what I would do is jump into the View Controller's header file, and I'd put my cursor over this MP Movie Player Controller uh, keyword here, and you'll notice, of course, that within the Quick Help, I get a, uh, a link to the reference for the MP Movie Player Controller class. And I'm going to click on that, and that'll open up Organizer and you'll see that it opens up the class reference itself. And if you scroll down a little bit, there is a section here that talks about supported formats, and here we are. And you'll see that it's, it, um, movie files are you know, typically the following formats are supported, and then of course you have to follow the following compression standards. So if you're working with a piece of, uh, with a video um, after you've watched this tutorial, and you discover that you get only audio and no video, it's likely because either you've got the wrong extension or you're using one of uh, a compression format that this uh, that iOS just doesn't support. So make sure you pay attention to that. I know for a fact that this video that I'm using uh, does meet one of these uh, does meet these standards, so we should be able to work with it just fine. Okay, so we've got this implemented. Let's jump back into our view controllers implementation file, and we've got to add some code here to this particular method that we created earlier. First step, of course, is we've imported our video, and that's done. Now we need to be able to know how we can reach into our bundle and pull that video out to use with our MP Movie Player controller. So the way we do that is let's just create an NS string and we'll call it maybe video file. And what we're going to do here, of course, is we're just going to say NS string or no, we don't want to do that. We what we want to do is we want to reach into the bundle. So let's say um, we'll say NS bundle main bundle. So that tells us that you know this is the bundle for this particular application. We're going to say path for resource, which takes an NS string, which takes two parameters, uh, the first one being an NS string and the name. So here's where we enter the name of our file. So that's, in our case, is this. Whoop, not funny, but bunny. And we have to also give it the type. In this case, this is going to be an M4V file. And you notice that I did not include the extension um, as part of the first NS string parameter. Now I get a warning, of course, that's because I have not used this file just yet. Next, what I've, I have to do is I have to instantiate the MP Movie Player controller object. So you notice that we, of course, created a property. So I can just say Movie Player is MP Movie Player controller alloc. And then we're going to say init with content of URL or init with content URL. And it takes an NS URL, which we don't have. So we have to create one. So I'll just go ahead and create it right here. I'll say NS URL, whoop, NS URL. And if I can type, there we go, NS URL. 
and what we want to do is we want to say we want to use a method called the file URL with path which does in fact take an NS string and we can just pass it the NS string video file we get to close this particular one and one more and command s to save and there we go we now have a MP movie player controller object instantiated great next what we want to do is we actually have to add this uh, movie player objects view as a sub view to our current view so what we do here is we say self dot view and we say we want to add a sub view which is we want to add it on top of that and we're gonna say movie player we have to tell it movie player dot view command s to save and there we go we've now added the um, this video player or the MP movie player controller uh, instance to that and last but not least let's go ahead and uh, do a couple more things we can s let's have this play in full screen so all I have to do is here is I take the name of the instance and I just say it has a property called full screen which takes a boolean value and we just set that to yes so that ensures that it will play as full screen and we can also um, do things like uh, let's add one more property so if you've worked with uh, Apple devices you know that one popular device is um, is Apple TV and Apple TV supports something called AirPlay and you can very easily support AirPlay within your application by simply adding one line of code that says movie player dot allows AirPlay which is again a boolean value set that to yes and you'll see of course that uh, that will also appear as an option and then last but not least I can just come down here and I want to tell it to play the file so I'm just gonna say movie player play which is the first method that we want command s and there we are so we're now all set we can actually play or I'm sorry run this application and we'll find that this video plays just fine so let's go ahead and do that command R to uh, build uh, to compile and then run this application so let's give it a couple seconds here we see that it's uh, finishing up and almost there Here, here we go. So it should come up in our simulator in just one second. Here we are. Very simple interface, of course. We've just got a blank view with a simple button in it called Play Video. When I click on this, it um, launches the MP Movie Player controller, and you'll notice that it starts playing the video, of course. Um, so if I click on this, I can hit stop and um, hit done and there we are we are all set so that's how you can actually um, include a video within your MP movie player controller and uh, just to point this out you might see some warnings um, with this particular method because it's looking for certain things that it can't find uh, but that will not adversely affect your application in any way um, so you know you can definitely use this process to include video within your applications and sort of a key takeaway here of course is don't forget if you are using automatic reference counting um, you do need to create a property uh, to be able to um, uh, use this sort of MP movie player controller object um, because if you don't what's gonna happen is uh, if we had for example tried to instantiate it here by saying MP movie player controller and then declaring it all over here which is not much difference in terms of the code itself um, you would find that when you tried to play the video you just got a blank screen when you try to hit that play uh, play video button so keep that in mind when you're working with this if you've got old applications that aren't working because you've converted them to ARC or something like that that's probably the reason why so I hope this is helpful and um, good luck implementing video in your applications